Mark, Murata, love this machine. Very, very well finished. Yep. Is, it, is it a production workhorse? Yes, definitely. Yeah, we've got customers that have been running Muratas for 22, 24 years um, throughout the UK. Um, it's been an unbelievably reliable, accurate machine. They go in, we service them twice a year, assuming they're running 24-7. Um, we, we, don't, we don't get service calls on them, they just run and run and run. This particular model is the MT100, yep. what, what does that denote? Uh, MT100 is uh, the general work area for the, or the swing if you like, of the, of the main spindle and the sub spindle and its clearance around the turret. It's the most efficient diameter with the number of tool stations that you have on the machine. Okay, because some machines when you look at them they, they might be a 51 machine or a 65 and that denotes the bar capacity. What is the size of the bar you can run on this bar feed and through this machine? So on the MT100 it's uh, 50.8 and um, they will do an option for a larger billet size. If you want to go bigger um, then we do the MT200 which is 65 mil bar capacity with the option of 80 on an A28 spindle nose. Okay, and you've got two turrets on here, how many yep. tools can you get on those? 15 on all turrets, uh, we also have the option for three turrets, so the top two turrets then work on their respective spindles and the bottom turret will either work on the left hand side or the right hand side. A lot of people promote and talk about and try and get the, the maximum power and speed on their driven tools. Yep. Is Murata the same? Yep, yep. We have 6,000 RPM and a maximum of 8 kilowatts available on every single driven tool. So there's no side. restriction in your milling at all? No, no. What about Y-axis? Y-axis plus minus 30, the standard, on all turrets. So pretty, it's pretty, pretty big for bearing in mind you've got a 50 bar capacity. It's and a lot of Y-axis stroke. And this is a 100, do they go much bigger than this? Uh, we do the 200, which is the next size up. Um, if you then want to go bigger, they do the MT25, but then that's a slightly different um, arrangement of machine. Now let's talk about this gantry. This is interesting along the top. Is this just picking up part, or when a part's finished, taking a part to, to maybe another process? Yes, yeah, so if you have it just as the unloader option, then it will take the part from the subspindle and you can then transfer it to maybe a third party handling system, a robot, or it could go into maybe a heat treatment um, tunnel or an air drying tunnel, dewatering tank. So the idea is that if a customer is running for lots of hours unmanned, we can add some sort of automation, which could be packing and the process that leads to the packing operation. So you don't have to introduce another handling operation in between? No, no we, can, we, can, we can tailor the machine, which is what Rata like to do with Matsura, is have the whole solution. What about the size of the part that you could put in that gantry and move, the weight, the diameter? Is there, is there any restriction there? Um, because it's a 51 mil bar capacity, then the loader is designed to work around that bar size. Um, so it's a 51 diameter by 120 long, and I think it's around about two kilos that you can take through the, through the unloader. If you want to go bigger, let's say for argument, say you're billet loading, then we wouldn't use the loader, we'd have the full blown gantry, which can then work up to 120 diameter, I think it is by 60 mil long. So you're loading this machine here with a bar feed, but what we are saying is you could have a gantry where you can load billets and take billets out. Yes, yeah, so you can configure the machine to your workpiece. So if you're a billet working company, we can load billets, we can process them in the machine tool, and we can output a billet finished. Uh, cycle times is often a big factor on machines like this when you're looking yep. to win an order. Is it a fast machine? Does it does it compete in those areas? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, because you have the two turrets, you can be, use the bottom turret for balance turning operations. If you need to be using the uh, the, the, the bottom turret for work support loop at the centre, you can use that in turn with the top turret. Obviously, with three turrets, there's an awful lot going on, so you can be milling and turning on both spindles at the same time. And the control here is a Murata Fanuc CNC. If you had a t another twin turret machine, could you take a, a program out of that and put it straight through this, con this control? Yes, it's, it uses the standard Fanuc turning cycles. It's, it's a, it's a Fanuc control. And I mentioned to you about the power and the speed on the turret. What about the main spindle and the sub spindle? Are, are they equal or are they different? Uh, no, they're both exactly the same. Um, and uh, I think you have 4,500 RPM as standard and you get the option for 6,000 as well if you, if you so wish. Would you be scared of, of machining difficult materials on this? No. No, no. The, the construction machine, which is quite unique really, is it's a linear guide machine for its X and its Z axis, but the Y axis, because you have such a short Y axis of plus or minus 30 mil, we use a box guideway, so you don't get the theoretical crabbing on the Y that you could do on, on some other machines. And it's a true Y, it's not a compound slide, it's a 90 degree Y axis. And the fact that Matsura are the supplier of these, you've not only got the machine, but you've got the weight of the Matsura solution behind it too. Two go together quite well, don't they? Well, yeah, that's why we offer this machine, really. It's, it, uh, it dovetails itself lovely into what Matsura do in terms of unmanned, automated running, trying to exploit every single hour of every single day.